Hello everyone, it's Christina here with One Creative Direction. Welcome into my channel, welcome back. Um, glad to have you. So tonight we're gonna do a little Christmas fun. We've got a lot of different things going on here. Uh, so as you can see, I have a vase all ready to pour on. So we're gonna go through all of the steps to uh, pouring on a vase. Um, and so tonight we're going to do Christmas colors. I have some Christmas uh, gifts to make and a couple of um, places I'm going to have my, my artwork sitting in over the holidays for people to purchase and see. So um, we're going to go with the Christmas theme. We may fit, depending on how long the video is, we may fit two vase pours in. But I wanted to go through all the steps. So first step obviously is deciding on a vase. So um, just a little, a, a few tips about vases. Um, in order to maximize your profit, obviously, you want to get the vase as cheap as possible. So I typically buy mine from the thrift stores. Um, once you pick out your vases and you get them home, I do one of two things. Uh, if I have a dishwasher load ready, I usually throw up any vases that I've purchased in the dishwasher, get them all washed up really good. Or, like today, I didn't really have the ability to do that, and honestly, I just don't like to do dishes, so let's just be honest here. Uh, so I just washed the inside of it out with a couple of paper towels and some Windex, some glass cleaner, uh, and then this one was a little dirtier than some of the ones that I get, so I washed the outside as well with a paper towel and the glass cleaner. And then, so that's kind of step one after you purchase and you get it home. So step two, and this is kind of important, is you want to clean the vase. So you don't want that Windex and paper towel to be the only prep for the vase. So what you really need is you need some alcohol and coffee filter. This is kind of important. If you're ever wanting to clean off the surface before prep, uh, I do this a lot when I apply my decals. I, I make a lot of decals uh, on my Cricut. You always want to clean the surface first. And coffee filters do not leave any lint. Uh, so they are excellent cleaning tools. Get them at the dollar store. Okay, so I've already done that. I've cleaned the inside with glass cleaner and the outside with glass cleaner and the alcohol and a coffee filter. Again, you can skip the Windex uh, portion if you are able to throw them in the dishwasher. All right, so once you get that, your, your next step is going to be leveling. And of course, it doesn't have to be perfectly level, but you want to make sure that it's not leaning far to one side or another. So I always put my level, once I get it all cleaned off, I don't touch it after I get it clean and on my rack. I stick my level on top and for the most part, it's fairly level. It will do, it's not perfect. Um, another tip, uh, I usually pour on a baking rack. So I have this one, it has a lot more uh, wires going through it than the bigger ones. Um, and then I have a tub here. I also got at the thrift store. It's just a little plastic, like a shoe box, except a little bit bigger. Um, I've got some, some press and seal on the bottom of it. And I just pull that up once in a while. I let it get nice and thick, but I pour into this and then the paint dries on the bottom of there. And then I also, another thing I like to do is I like to put it on just one of these cheap turntables that I have. And I added some little wood, um, wood pieces to it to make it bigger to hold the whole thing but just a real cheap spinner I got I think I got this one at like Hobby Lobby or Michaels for like four or five bucks so I use them for various things um, so once you've got it all ready you're good to go to pour so tonight we're gonna try and use this split cup that I purchased uh, a while back I've never had an opportunity to use it so I thought tonight would be a good good time to use it and I've got it filled with all of my colors so I don't bore you with that. Everybody knows how to fill a container with paint. So we'll skip that on the video and just know that this is something I have never used this. I bought it, I don't know, 
probably six or eight months ago and I've never used this container. So with that being said, we're gonna proceed to the next step. Now, this is optional um, for, for most people. Um, I have found that you use a lot less paint if you coat the vase first. So whether you use like scrap paints that you've scraped from your surface, whatever it is. Um, sometimes I do like testing and, and mix up various types of recipes um, and I have those just sitting around. I'll use that type of stuff, whether it's scraps or, you know, test stuff or whatever. Um, so what I do is I pour the entire base and I try to cover the entire thing. And the advantage to this is it gives your paint something to stick to. Um, a lot of times when you're pouring, um, you don't, as you can see right now, it's only pouring on parts of it, right? So that's the advantage of this is it allows you to cover your entire surface of your base cover some spots, try to get full coverage. Now this paint's a little thicker than what I normally pre-coat with, but that's fine. Honestly, you don't want super, super thin paints um, when you're trying to get this coverage. Okay, so we're gonna go with that for now. I'm going to use my finger, of course I didn't put a glove on, I'm gonna use my finger and just I'll show you when it gets around to the other side. I'm just going to encourage it down the rest of the base. And it, since this is just a base coat, it's probably, you know, you're not going to see any of it. It really doesn't matter what it looks like. It's just getting full coverage, All right? So you can see turned it and this is obviously the reason that I like to put it on a turntable. I don't like to guess on whether or not this side of my vase is covered. Um, this gives you obviously the ability to turn it around and make sure it's covered. So, but I also have a mirror on the far wall that I can see the back of everything that I paint. So between the two, you get really good coverage. All right. So, the next thing that I do that, you know, may be optional for a lot of folks, you know, maybe you might think it's not necessary. Uh, I personally prefer it. Um, I usually take a hair dryer. I'm going to do that here in a second. So, I wipe my finger off. I take a hair dryer and I get all that excess paint off the top of there before I pour. So, we're going to do that right now. And I always just put it on low. At first, this paint's a little thicker, so I might have to put it on high and get it up a little higher. I like to get all that excess off of the top of there. I don't want anything puddling on the top. All right, so I probably used a little bit more paint than I needed to on this, but that's fine. Like I said, it's just scrap paint. Uh, it's paint that I used. I was doing some testing a while back, and. Uh, basically it and I didn't really care for the the result so it became scrap paint okay so that's all ready so before I pour my colors on I, I do a, a quick inspection of the outside um, and this is optional as well but I usually torch if I see air bubbles uh, you don't want to put your colors on with the air bubbles and I don't see any chunks of paint or anything which is a good sign just another thing you want to look for. You don't want any chunks of paint on your base. All right, so that looks good. All right, so now we can proceed. And hopefully with this paint being this thick, hopefully it works out. Uh, this paint that I'm pouring over is a lot thinner, so um, hopefully that works out, but it's covering really nicely. 
All right, so my colors tonight are, I used um, Deco Arts Satin Enamel Black. I have Iridescent White by Soho. I have Soho's Gold and I added Iridescent to it. I'm going with an Iridescent theme with this base. I also added Iridescent to the black. I have Pebio Studios I believe it's green yellow iridescent and I have Pebio Studios I want to say it's red blue iridescent I'm not sure on that I, I think it is red blue but that's fine I don't have a very small undertone of blue all right so I've got those and I put them in this split cup as you can see I put the black in the center I tried to place them so like the red wasn't by the white the black wasn't by the white so uh, we'll see how that goes, but I've got those five colors in there, and we're going to pour this over the vase. All right, here we go. Oh, wow, that looks really pretty. I probably got way too much on here. Now, as you can see, it is covering very well because of that base coat, right? You can see that it is spreading out really, really well. And I'm gonna do some little patterns here so we can get some cool effects going down the base. I've got a few spots that I need a little bit more paint on. That side's got really good coverage. This side needs a little bit more paint. And you wanna obviously give it some, some time to, for the paint to reach the bottom before you know you just pour a bunch of paint on there, right? Um, so I'm going to do some little swirls here. I think if I had to do this over again, I wouldn't put as much black on there, but I think in the end it'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to let that just kind of go down the side of the base. It wasn't going to be enough. That actually turned out pretty cool. Hopefully some of those colors stay. I'm going to put a little bit more paint in my cup of all these colors except for the black. I just want to get a little bit more color through there. So I'm going to put a little bit more in here. Not a lot of all the colors except the black. I like the black. I didn't want it to be the dominant color, but, all right. Should be good. All right, let's do this again. Oh, that's so pretty. I need to put more color on here though. I don't know if you guys can see how pretty that looks. Can you see that? It's really pretty. I like it. I hesitate to put more color on it because I really like the subtle colors with the black. Oh, decisions, decisions, decisions. What do I do? I feel like I, I feel like it needs more color, you guys. So we're gonna put some colors in here. So while I'm waiting on that to pull down, I'm going to take my hair dryer and put it on low this time. I don't want the paint to go really fast off the top of there. I want it to go a little slower because you don't want a hair dryer effect, obviously. I'm going to take a little bit and I kind of look around the edges to see where I need the color. I need a little bit 
it over here. And you see it just kind of rolls down the side like that, and it gives you a really cool effect, actually. Um, a little bit here and there. All right, that should be good. Let's take a second look here, see what we've got. Maybe a little bit more color down that side. Okay. So, as that's dripping, I wanted to kind of go over my recipe for my paint, um, give it a few minutes as it's dripping down, and then I'll take the, the torch to it. Uh, so the mixture for my paints was mostly paint and water only. I've been doing a lot of paint and water only lately. And so with this recipe, all I did was uh, the paint plus the iridescent, if it, if it wasn't already an iridescent paint, and then I added a small amount of Artist Loft pouring medium in each one. And that's simply because I've had it here forever, brand new bottle, I thought, what the heck, I might use it. So I added a little bit of that to each one, each color, um, and then added water to get the right consistency that I was looking for. Uh, and this turned out really cool. I really like this, you guys. Really, really like this. How cool. I think, this, I think the colors were a little too subtle before I added the additional ones. So let's get the torch out and let's torch this. The bottom of it looks really cool. All right, so I'm gonna torch this all the way around. So uh, what I do once it's dry, and see this one's dry, Actually, I'm gonna move the, the video over just a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing without me touching it. Okay, so what I do is, so this is another Christmas one. Um, I just sprayed it with shellac today. So it, I poured this a couple weeks ago. So what I do after it's really dry, like I said, seven days, I mean, you could do it before that. It's just usually when I get around to it. So what I do is I take this over to my scrap table over there, which is just a bunch of scrap paint that I like scrape into and, and such. And then I take this straight knife, and this is actually a Cricut one that I use quite a bit. And it's, as you can see, it's used been, been used quite a bit. And I take this, let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing, because I am blind. And I take this straight razor and I just Pick a spot. Sometimes the vases have a line. Sometimes I go all the way down to that line, but it gives it a really nice, clean appearance on the top there, right? Oop, about to hit my vase. It gives it a real nice, clean appearance. I just take this and I hold it at whatever angle it is, and I just scrape all the excess paint. Um, and you don't get a lot, but sometimes there's some on the top here, and I just pick a spot and do that same position all the way around. So it gives it a nice, clean look. Um, I don't like the look of it going over the edge, and I feel like it's better this way. That way, you know, it's less exposure to water uh, because I, I coat these with uh, crab coat from Crystal Hack. So you can see it's just got uh, two light coats of shellac on it, but it's super shiny, right? Okay, so once I get that done, what I do is I let the course let it dry if it's not completely dry and then like I just mentioned I put the two coats of shellac on or I just go straight into the crab coat it really depends on what the weather is outside um, if I'm not able to spray outside I just go straight into my crab coat um, if I can spray then obviously after the shellac you have to wait 48 hours for it to gas off before you can use crystal -like products but I mean if you're resinine or whatever then you have a different schedule um, this is how I coat mine so once I get my shellac dried past the 48 hours, I put on about four to five coats of the crab coat. Uh, after the first coat of crab coat, or sometimes before the first coat of crab coat, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I put my sticker on the bottom. So I'm gonna pause for a second. I'm gonna run and get one of those so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, so this is what I was talking about. These are my logo for my company. 
and it says hand wash only, no dishwasher, no hot water, no soaking. So it's basically just, you know, letting them know where they got it. Um, actually, it doesn't even have my name. Oh yeah, it does. It's kind of hard to see, but it's around the red circle. Um, has my name and logo and care instructions. I used to make cards and put them in the vases, but this is a lot easier. It's permanent and it's under the protective coating. So it, the care instructions are always there. So I just print these out on clear water slide. And then I, if you know anything about water slide, I do have a few videos on my channel about water slide and how to use it. Um, but if you know anything about water slide, you know you have to seal it before you can cut it. So I basically seal it with clear uh, Rust-Oleum, three, four, five layers, it doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure you have enough so that when you add the water, it doesn't like just completely get damaged. Hi guys, I'm back. I originally was going to show y'all another process in using a cup turner to pour on a vase. And full disclosure, I did start recording that and things didn't go well, um, which is usually the case. I don't really care for the cup turners for pouring on vases. Um, I don't like the look of the, the paint, um, even though I use you know, paint and water. I know a lot of people have issues with it getting muddy, um, it not, you know, rotating properly and leaving big clumps of paint on the vase. And I just haven't had much success and I really don't care for the look of it. So we're going to stick with this process uh, of pouring paint on the vase. So what I'm doing here is I went through all the same steps I did in the previous section. Uh, the only difference with this is I'm pouring the colors on individually instead of using the split cup. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to speed this up and pour the rest of the paint on here. And I'll come back in at the end where the process changes a little bit and kind of explain to you what I'm doing. All right.
Okay, time for the next step. So what I'm doing here is I am pouring another color over the top of the colors once they're completely on there. And this is a, a recipe that is actually from Molly's Artistry. I believe she uses it on as a base coat for her large canvases when she's doing a Dutch pour. Um, so I've used that. Uh, and I just kind of accidentally stumbled upon it for this process. Uh, but you'll see what I do here. So once I get uh, the vase fully covered, um, I get my hair dryer out. I know that sounds crazy. Um, and the full process is, and the recipe and everything is in a separate video. And I'll link that in the description. But I'm removing that excess paint at the top like I normally do with the hair dryer. And then you're going to leave the hair dryer on, a, on the hot setting. And you're just going to start running that hair dryer over the outside of that paint. All right. And you're just going to keep going over and over it. And it really just depends on like how long you hold your hair dryer in a certain spot and how close you are to the vase. Um, and all these different variables on it. That, that's how the effect that comes of it is determined uh, by all those things. Um, as you can see, I'm spinning it around and moving the hair dryer around. Uh, the longer you hold it on a spot, the more cracks and the paint kind of starts to melt a little bit and pull away. Uh, and you'll see as I continue doing this, you'll see it doing that. Um, and you just keep, keep doing this, keep moving the hair dryer, depending on what kind of effect you want and just keep doing it until the paint's completely dry. It takes about mm, maybe five or 10 minutes, depending on the size of the vase. Um, but you're just going to keep running over it, uh, as I'm doing here. So I think I'm going to let you guys, uh, finish watching me do this. Um, I do have it sped up a little bit, um, and I'll let you listen to music.
Okay guys, I'm gonna film this real quick, uh, kind of a bonus section. Um, I went ahead and did one more vase with some bright, dark colors, purples and blues. I put some Soho silver in there, a little bit of white, and um, I'm gonna let this dry for about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the over, uh, the white over it with the hairdryer. Uh, to see if more of the color stays by doing it that way. Um, this actually looks pretty cool without doing anything to it. Um, so when I get out of the shower, I may decide to just keep it the way it is. So uh, we'll see when I get out, but I uh, wanted to bring you back and show you the before so I can show you the after. Hey guys, just wanted to give you a really, really quick update on the dried results. I'm going over the results. So this is the first one that I did with the iridescent color. So kind of what I was going for. You can see that really nice iridescent shine on it. I'm not real sure. I think it was maybe my, my base layer did that, but it's on the bottom and I really don't, don't care about that. Uh, but the rest of it looks really good. Real nice coverage. Yeah everything iridescent. And then here are the two that I did. I'm oh, sorry about that, guys. I'm trying to hold it and uh, talk at the same time. So this was the first one I did. You can see how muted the colors are um, on this process. Um, let me get this other side. This kind of like this area here. Um, overall, it looks really good. It looks very similar to one of the first ones that I did, and um, it went over really well. Uh, so you can see Kind of the effects that you can get so that's why i did the second one um i let this paint sit for um i want to say it was about 15 minutes or so um, before i put the top layer on and, and blew it dry um so it seems like these colors are a lot brighter i used blues and some purples so you can see those colors a lot better. I feel like they're a little more vibrant. Um, so maybe they had a little bit more time to dry uh, before. This face is really weird. It has like a hole in this bottom, really strange. But uh, yeah, I, I think maybe the next time I do this, I will let it dry even longer before I do the top portion. So that's just a quick, quick update, guys. Um, thanks for joining me. I'll get this video out and catch you on the next one.